Writings from a former Xbox executive have become the topic of discussion once again and have put into question Xbox's strategy late in this generation and going into the next one. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. Before we get too deep into this one, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because I'm not too proud to ask. You know how I do it. Okay, now what is going on today, MM2K? Well, the thing is, is that your boy has his ear to the ground to many podcasts. I may not be the biggest steward and the biggest fan of IGN, but again, I listen to everything. They have connections. They have access to different things. And because of that, you may get little tidbits of news and stuff that, that may be worthwhile, worth discussing, okay? So I was listening to the most recent episode of Podcast Unlocked. It's episode 400, okay, at the time of this recording. During that episode, they talked about an interview that uh, Ryan McCaffrey of Podcast Unlocked and of IGN Dead with former Xbox executive Robert Bach, okay, also known as Robbie Bach. In this sit down that he did with him back in 2015, it was brought up uh, the, a discussion in regards to Robbie Bach's book that he had wrote at the time. The name of the book is Xbox Revisited, a game plan for corporate and civic renewal. And in this book, Robbie talks about how all the Xbox people, how their previous strategy for winning, particularly with the Xbox 360, was let's get the hardcore on board first. Then we, after we get the hardcore on board, we're going to add features to gather mindshare, okay? I find that particularly interesting because not only did it work for the 360, but it worked for Sony, in the latter part of the PlayStation 3 generation, when they were working on Mindshare because of the hack and all the other stuff, them going into the PlayStation 4 generation, it helped them wall up the competition there, and they're staying afloat with this whole uh, uh, strategy going into the PlayStation 5 generation. And I just find it interesting that the entity that said, hey, in the light of this heated battle, this is what we want to do. Under this new regime, they're abandoning that, okay? Now, Xbox this generation, under the helm of Film and, uh, Phil and Satya, have enacted a different strategy, okay? They have enacted a different tac tactic. Only to have that tactic, A, fail at mindshare tremendously. Now, they may be the darlings of uh, uh, publications like IGN now, but don't ex don't don't confuse that as mind share. They're only the darlings of places like IGN, and you even had um, more uh, or Colin Moriarty. Dang, I, I, I completely butchered that. Off of uh, formerly of uh, uh, a kind of funny podcast. He's a big time PlayStation guy. You have him saying positive things about Xbox now. But notice they're only doing this as explaining Xbox as a second tier choice. You know what I'm saying? They don't put Xbox on a pedestal to even try to bang with Sony. As long as you're a second tier choice like a Nintendo, you're cool. Don't try to compete with a preferred platform. And that goes for everybody at IGN too. It's no mystery that the preferred platform is PlayStation. That at the beginning of the PlayStation 4, that even though PlayStation 4 really didn't have the output that people are praising now, that that was in the favor of Xbox, right? That they were rating the PlayStation. They were giving grades out at the beginning of the generation. We know all that, right? So again, don't, don't uh, mistake this about face, quote unquote, as a means of mind share. They only, only are liking Xbox now and saying positive things because Xbox is saying, we're not trying to compete with PlayStation. And they love that aspect of it. 
you know, if if Microsoft were to pull out the guns and the pistols again, trust me, you would see the same negative press constantly. So, again, I, when I talk about Mindshare, I'm talking about Mindshare with its base, with its core, with the people that want Xbox Gaming or Microsoft Gaming to be their primary function. Those people that came aboard the Xbox brand with the original Xbox and helped it grow in numbers with the 360, that mind share has been dropping off a cliff faster than Wile E. Coyote, okay? Secondly, in some retail aspects, this strategy has lost. And when I say this strategy again, I'm talking about the opposite of put the hardcore gamer first, where Microsoft is trying to put the casual gamer first. This is a new strategy. It's unproven. And again, it doesn't even seem to be winning across the board, when, even when it comes to retail. With the release of the Xbox One X, Phil and company made it very clear that the Xbox One S was going to be their flagship console, mainly because they felt it was more appealing to the, to the uh, casual game. It was cheaper, and even though it was less powerful, they felt like that it was more attainable. And with it being more attainable, it was going to be the, the console that the casuals would flock to, right? And what we've seen since they've had this strategy, where they have the more powerful console, the thing that would be more appealing for the Xbox brand, but they're marketing the weaker console in hopes of trying to grab the, the, the casual, that they have not won a single NPD as far as their hardware is concerned since having this strategy. It's even so bad that your boy MM2K believes that this was the reason that they came out with the Xbox One sad. See, what people fail to realize is that Xbox buys CPUs at a bulk. We had... Uh, my man from johnpetty.com that does a lot of research and stuff like that in, in this area on Z's podcast. And he helped us understand how these types of things transpire a little bit better. He helped us pull back the layer of that onion. And even though people were doubtful and said, oh, his numbers don't make sense. Now in 2019, they make perfect sense. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, it's very plausible that Xbox and Microsoft thought that this was going to be a winning strategy for them that it was going to help close the gap because they talked about this they thought that this strategy was going to help them close the gap at least in north america that maybe they would you know chalk out a couple of npds and they may have bought cpus at bulk only to do the worst that they've ever done all generation not a single single npd in hardware so I imagine they got a whole bunch of CPUs that they plan to use for their flagship console, the Xbox One S, just sitting in a warehouse somewhere that they need to do something with as we wind down this generation, right? So because of that, I believe that that's what spawned the Xbox One sad. Not just we're gonna do a field test of it. That's stupid. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Particularly because the Xbox One said still has the eject button on the board <coughs> within the guts of the system. They just basically took the hard drive out to make it seem like they were driving down cars to give you the aesthetic and the illusion that this was a field test. We know Microsoft don't blow money on nothing. We know that this was just a power grab somehow, some way, in some fashion. And to believe that they were going to do a field test it's dumb. <laughs> it's dumb. Especially when there's nothing specialized about this console besides them hastily just nabbing <laughs> the hard drive out. So again, to bring this all home, as far as retail is concerned, this strategy is not working. Now they're looking to push this strategy out in regards to next generation and they're expecting it to win all of a sudden but again it's been applied to mindshare and it's not working there 
you have the Xbox community at odds more than they've ever been, ever. You have it applied at retail, and it's been a failure. They have not won a single NPD since this has been applied. And I'm gonna throw in two, it's not even working with software. I mean, Microsoft is making money, but a lot of that money is off of the, the, the subscription services and the the, the uh, DLC content associated with a lot of their more successful games. It's not, it's not signs of successful software in the hands of the gamer. Because if you do a 12 month year to date, I mean, I'm sorry, a 12 month rolling calendar of games from May of 2019 to May of 2018. There is no Xbox game in the top 10 in regards to sales, even Minecraft, which is a multi-plat. It's not in that list when you do that rolling calendar litmus. If you do a year to date litmus, there is also no Xbox software in the top 10 when you do a year to date litmus so far at this point in time within 2019. So with that said, their strategy of trying to appeal to this uh, to the casual gamer is not winning in software. It's not winning anywhere. So I go back, I reckon back to Robbie Bach in his book where he details approaching and saturating the hardcore with the stuff that they want first, getting their minds here together and having the hardcore spread the good news across town that gets to the casuals is a winning strategy. And Xbox and Microsoft is abandoning it and they're abandoning it to their own peril. This is an unproven strategy. So if you don't want to believe that Phil is doing anything nefarious, if you want to believe that he's a nice guy, then you got to, at the very least, you got to understand the risk that they're occurring by implementing a strategy that has not proven to win in the past, but it's not even winning now. So it's time for everybody, I mean everybody, to stand up and say, Phil, think about this. Don't go into the weeds, man. Just get out of your silo. Look at this and rethink everything for the benefit of not only you, but to us, your faithful, the hardcore gamer. Golly, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not too hard to ask. But what do I know? You know what I'm saying? That's it from your boy, MM2K. Hey, let me know what you think about what I have to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me and come at me. It don't matter to your boy. But if you did like what I had to say in this, this very video, you can catch more. I'm on the corner of every boulevard, baby. Check out the links below to follow me. I do a show with your peoples. Snow Bunny. Dirt Griggity. Neethos. It's called Scrampunks. We air it every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out hashtag Scrampunks for more information on that. And yo, support my brethren, the broadband bullies. We out here doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord link. Check out that Patreon link. Check out that gear because it's fly. And last but not least, follow your boy on his biggest individual project to date. It is called the Hard Knock Digital Culture. I'm doing it exclusively on Twitch. We are highlighting hardcore gaming, hardcore cinema, hardcore anime, you name it. The hardcore, the hard knock digital culture over at Twitch. Follow me there at twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000. And with that all being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.